Hello, warriors. Um, so today I'm wanting to read my this like whole uh, special edition for warriors. So I have a lot of warrior cat, um, like a lot of warrior cat books, and I have not read Crowfeather's Trial yet. So to catch up on what the hell's happening. This is going to be a really long reading, so each episode is going to have a special purpose to it. So like, each day maybe I'll get the chance to read the next chapter, and we'll see how many pages we'll read and continue off. So yeah, let's sit back, relax, and enjoy the reading, okay? Anyways, Pearl Ague. Crowpaw pressed himself back into the crevice. He winced at the sharp points of rock jabbing into his fur. They told him the space was too shallow to shelter him. He let out a cry of terror as he gazed up at the looming head of shoulders and shoulders of Sharptooth, the huge lion cat. Sharptooth soot stooped over him, scraping at the rock with one paw's massive talon. Moonlight fl filtering through the waterfall cast a glow on his face, showing Crowpaw lips drawn back in a cruel snarl curved fangs and jaws dripping with drool. Sharp tools rancid breath swept over Crowpaw, and his eyes glared down, savage with hunger. I can't believe I'm going to die like this, Crowpaw thought, desperately. And after all we've been through, we've left our homes, traveled so far, and faced so many dangers. We met the Badger at midnight and discovered a new destiny for our clans. I want to be part of that. I want to be part of our future. But now it's over. Crowpaw could hear the wailing of the tribe cat and, a skin and see skinny forms perched on ledges high above the cave floor in shades of gray and brown. His panicked gaze sought over Out's feather tail and his heart warmed when he spotted her gray pelt. She was crouching beside her brother, Stormfur, on a ledge just under the roof. She's so beautiful. I don't want to die before I have the chance to... Then, somehow, above the terrified cries of the other cats and the snarling of Sharptooth, Crowpaw heard Feathertail. I can hear the voices clearly now, she meowed. This is for me to do. For a moment, Crowpaw's fear was banished by confusion. What voices? Silver flashed in the moonlight as Feathertail launched herself from the ledge hurling herself at one of the points of stones that hung down from the roof. For a few heartbeats, she clung there, digging her claws into the rock. Crowpaw heard Stormfur yell, No! He watched in horror, forgetting his own danger as the stone began to split away from the roof with a sickening crack. It couldn't support Feathertail's weight. It was about to collapse. Feathertail! He yelled. No! Get down from there! but it was impossible for Feathertail to escape. With a dull, grinding noise, the stone broke away and plumbed down. Feathertail was still clinging to it, falling straight towards Sharptooth. Crowpaw could hardly, bear, could hardly bear to watch, yet he couldn't tear his gaze from the scene. The lion cat looked up. His snarl changed to a scream of pain as the spike thrust its way into its neck. He fell to the ground. Risening in agony as Feathertail tumbled from the spike, hitting the cave floor beside him. For a moment, Crowpaw was frozen with shock as he gazed at the gentle she-cat. Her eyes were closed. Crowpaw couldn't tell whether she was breathing. Is she alive? Stormfur hurled down the rock towards his sister's side. Beside them, the lion cat twitched for a few heartbeats, then gave a massive shudder and was still. Sharp tooth was dead. Feathertail? Stormfur whispered. Crowpaw stumbled out of his curvice, still shaking and crouched beside the two River Clan cats. Feathertail? He rasped, hardly able to keep his voice steady. Feathertail, are you okay? Though Feathertail did not respond, Crowpaw could now see the faint rise and fall of her chest. She's alive! He mewed, his pad prickling with hope. She'll be fine, Stormfur's voice cracked, as if he didn't believe what he was saying. She's gotta be... She... She has a prophecy to fulfill! But a terrible fear was growing inside Crowpaw. 
What if Feathertail just did fulfill the prophecy? It has spoken of a silver cat, who would save them from a terrible lion cat. Crowpaw had never imagined that would actually come true, or that the silver cat would be Feathertail. But did that mean her story ended here? What if she never goes home to help lead her clan to its new territory? He crept forward until his nose touched Feathertail's shoulder. Breathing deeply, he let her sweet scent flow through him and gently began to link her ruffled pelt. He thought about the future he had dreamed of, where they would find a way to be together, even though they were from different clans. Wake up, Feathertail, he mewed. Please wake up. He let out a gasp as Feathertail's eyes fluttered open. She looked warmly at Crowpaw, then turned her head slightly to look up at Stormfur. You'll have to go home without me, brother, she murmured. Save the clan! Feathertail, he croaked through a painful lump in his throat. Then her head shifted again, her gaze focusing once more on Crowpaw. He trembled at the intense love he saw at her in her blue eyes. I don't deserve her, he thought. I never deserved her. Do you think you have nine lives, do you? Feathertail whispered, I saved you once. Don't make me save you again. Feathertail! Feathertail, no! As she weakened before him, Crowpaw felt as if a huge weight were crushing his chest, so that he could hardly speak. Don't leave me. I won't. The words were breathed out so faintly that Crowpaw could scarcely hear them. I'll always be with you, I promise. Then, Feathertail's eyes closed, and she did not move or speak again. Crowpaw turned to look at Sharptooth's body, bloody and growing cold. Feathertail had killed the lion cat, fulfilling the tribe's prophecy, but nothing about it felt right. What good was saving Crowpaw and the tribe if Feathertail had to give her life to do it? He flung his head back and let out a wordless wail, which echoed off the cave walls, an outpouring of all his love and anguish. Then darkness swirled around him, and he crouched beside Feathertail in a tight knot of grief. He felt as if all the light in the world had been snuffed out. How could he live with this loss? Voices drifted past him in the dark. He heard Stormfur blaming himself for bringing Feathertail back to the tribe. He turned his head to look up at the River Clan cat. It's my fault. Crowpaw's voice was a hoarse whisper. If I'd refused to come back to the cave, she would have stayed with me. No, Stormfur said softly, reaching out to Crowpaw, who could only bow to his head. He could hear Brook and Stoneteller trying to comfort Stormfur, but there would be no comfort for Crowpaw now, maybe not ever. The tribe of endless hunting spoke truly, said Stoneteller. A silver cat has saved us all. Yes, thought Crowpaw, but no cat saved her, and now the clans will never be the same. Never. The word echoed around Crowpaw until he felt his heart break. We'll never be mates or have kids together. I'll never see her again. Never. Crowfeather awoke, shivering. His pelt was soaked with early morning dew, but that wasn't the reason for the chill that struck deep within him. It had been countless moons since Feathertail had died killing Sharptooth, but in his dream, it had felt as if it were happening all over again. The pain of losing Feathertail felt like a fresh wound. I never thought I would love another cat, he thought, and yet now. He glanced down at the small tabby and white she-cat, who was curled up beside him underneath the thorn bush. His grief for Feathertail had consumed him, and had taken him ma many moons to find the path that would lead him out of the darkness. Now, he could not understand how Leafpool had made his way into his heart, filling him with more joy than he had ever hoped to feel again. Like Feathertail, she was a cat from another clan, but unlike Feathertail, Leafpool was a medicine cat and had vowed to never take a mate. This made the love even more impossible than its first. I certainly know how to make things com complicated. Crowfeather thought with a weary twitch of his whiskers. The only way he and Leafpool could be together was to make a huge sacrifice, to leave the clans and everything they had ever known. But if they had decided to take the risk, amazingly, Crowfeather thought watching Leafpool's chest rise and fall. We could have a future together. Leafpool had come with them willingly, heading out into unknown territory. But then, 
The night before, they had met the wise badger Midnight, who had told them that sa savage badgers were gathering to attack the clans. The battle would be fierce and bloodstained. Cats would die. Beeple had said nothing about returning, and neither had he. But as he watched her sleeping form, Crowfeather knew what she had what she would say to him when she woke. Her dedication and her loyalty to Sunderclan were part of why he loved her, and that meant their dream of being together would soon come to an end. Oh, Leafpool, he sighed aloud. I would have taken care of you until my last breath. As if his words had disturbed her, Leafpool awoke, leaping to her paws, her eyes wild and distraught. Crowfeather, she gasped. I can't stay here. We have to go back. She looked at him, her wide eyes full of regret. Crowfeather raised his head. I know, he mewed, sadness rising inside him like a flooding stream. I feel the same way. We have to go and help our clans. He could see the relief in her eyes as she pressed her muzzle against his. He wished they could stay that way forever, but much too soon she had let out a purr and meowed. Let's go as they tripped across the moorland toward home, though neither of them said it. Crowfeather realized that he was losing another mate, not as terribly as he lost Feathertail, but just as finally. Leafpool is choosing to return to her clan because they needed her, needed their medicine cat, and that meant that Crowfeather's only option was to reunite with WindClan. He imagined what it would feel like, walking back into a camp he'd never expect to see again. Everything would seem boring to his eyes. He himself would feel like a stranger. If they'll ever even have me, he thought bitterly. They all know where I went and why, and they'll blame me for leaving. There'll be questions about my loyalty, that's for sure. I'll never forget what we shared, Leafpool murmured as they approached the stepping stones that led across the stream into ThunderClan territory. There was grief in her face, but a set of determination that was stronger. Nor will I, Crowfeather responded, halting to at the edge of the stream. He pressed himself against Leafpool's side, and parted his jaws to taste her scent for the last time. I'll miss her so much, he thought. Her softness, her strength and courage, and how we could play together as if we were no older than kids again. Leafpool pushed her nose into his shoulder fur. Her amber eyes were full of love for him, but it's not enough. She doesn't love me enough. Her heart lies here with her clan. She's so loyal. I just wish she could be as loyal as me. To me. Goodbye, Crowfeather. Leafpool whispered. I'll see you again when all this is over. What do you mean, goodbye? Crowfeather made his voice harsh. Otherwise, he would have started wailing like a lost kid. I'm not leaving you when there are hostile badgers around. But you need to warn WindClan, Leafpool protested. I know, and I will, but I'll see you to your camp first. It won't take long. Leafpool didn't argue with him, but as he followed her across the stepping stones and into the trees, Crowfeather knew that he was only pre prolonging their anguish. That's it, he thought as he raced along. As Leafpool disappeared into the thick undergrowth, he knew that he would never be with her this way again. They would cross paths during gatherings and other clan business, but they have to keep their distance as if they never loved e each other at all. He couldn't bear to imagine how much that would hurt. He couldn't think of anything worse. If he was lucky, maybe a battered would tear him apart. If I do survive, he thought, I'm finished with love. It only ended in pain and loss, an ache in his belly as if he'd swallowed jagged stones. From now on, he vowed as he forced himself to fall equal. I'll only worry about my duty to my clan. No more love. Not ever again. Wind swept across the moor, ruffling Crowfeather's gray-black fur as he stood among the rest of his clanmates at the crest of the hill. They were gathered in a ragged circle around their clan leader, one star who stood beside a small pile of stones. Crowfeather remembered what hard work it had been to find the right number of smoothly rounded stones and push them up the slope to the place where they'd chosen. <clears throat> his paws still ached from the effort and he raised one forepaw to lick a scrape on his pad. But it was worth it to do this.
We will honor our clanmates who fell in the great battle. One star meowed. Each of these stones stands for a fallen warrior, so that we will never forget their sacrifice. From now on, a patrol will visit this place every day to repeat the names of those who died and to give thanks. Yes, Crowpella thought. That way we'll never forget their courage. They saved us from the dark forest. The clan leader paused for a heartbeat, then dipped his head toward the brown and white Tom, standing next to him. As our new deputy, Hairspring, he continued, You should put the last stone in place. <coughs> Crowfeather stiffened, making a conscious effort not to let his shoulder fur bristle as he watched. Hairspring thrust the final stone across the springy moorland grass and slide it nearly into the gap left for it. This stone is for Ashfoot. Hairspring mewed solemnly. She served her clan well. Crowfeather felt a pain, fresh pain of grief for his dead mother, whose throat had been ripped out by the claws of a dark forest warrior, and realized that his pain was mingled with disappointment. They had never been chosen as the new clan's deputy. He was aware of some of his clanmates casting side long glances at him, as if they had expected it too. After all, he was a senior warrior and one of the chosen cats who had traveled to the sun drowned place to meet with Midnight. Both my parents were deputies he thought, and I've given up for more of my clan than any cat, but I suppose I will never be deputy. Well, one star wanted to send a message by choosing a dark forest cat, and however mouse-brained that message may be, it's sent. He suppressed a sigh, admitting to himself that this was a stranger time for the clans, as they tried to come together after the great battle, almost a moon ago. It's like Kestriel Flight trying to heal a wound just by slapping cobweb on it without cleaning it out or using any herbs. Crowfeather narrowed his eyes as he gazed at his clan leader. One star looked relaxed, content, his amber eyes gleaming as if it was truly believed that Wind Clan was united again. But Crowfeather knew it didn't always work like that. And maybe that was another reason why he had been chosen. He was incapable of pretending that life could ever be that simple. When the last stone was in position, Kesriel Flight, the Wind Clan Medicine Cat, padded up to the stand beside the pile. Looking over out to the horizon, the wind ruffled his mottled gray pelt, but his voice rang out clearly across the moor. We feel the loss of our dead clanmates. But we know that they had been made welcomed in Star Clan. May they have good hunting, swift running, and shelter when they sleep. He dipped his head in deepest respect, then moved back into the crowd of his clanmates. A ripple of agreement passed through the clan, voice hushed with the solemnity of the moment. One star began to speak again, but it was hard for Crowfeather to consecrate, concentrate when he spotted his son Breeze Pelt. Hovering on the fringe, his expression angry and uncomfortable. Lucky always looks. Crowfeather thought bitterly. His mind drifted inexorably back to the great battle, especially how he had sink his claws into Breeze Pelt's shoulders and hauled him back to keep him from killing his half brother Lime Blaze. He knew that one star had forgiven Breeze Pelt, as well as all the other cats who had trained in the dark forest. They had each taken a new oath of loyalty to Wind Clan, but Crowfeather knew that the rest of the clan wasn't as eager to forgive as their clan leader, and the cat they were fighting, finding it harder to forgive, hardest to forgive was Breeze Pelt. <clears throat> Even now, he could see suspicious looks directed towards his son, and knew that he would hear whispers once they had returned to camp. All the other Dark Forest warriors had come to their senses and fought beside their clan, all except Breeze Pelt. He had actually stood with the Dark Forest. He had fought on their side. It would be many moons before that was forgotten. 
As Crowfeather watched his son, Breezepelt turned his head, and for a heartbeat, their gazes locked. Breezepelt's gaze was dark with anger and confusion. Then, Crowfeather glanced away, not wanting Breezepelt to see the mixture of guilt and disgust he could feel in his eyes. How did I fail so badly as a father? How did I raise a flea, flea brain who grew up to be a traitor to WinClan? He's as much used as a dead fox. One star drew his speech to an end, and with the ceremony over, the clan began breaking up into smaller groups, making their way down the hill toward the camp. Crowfeather noticed that the other dark forest cats, Hairspring, Lurking fur Lurkwing, First Pelt, and Whiskernose, were heading down together as if they felt that they didn't belong with the rest of their clanmates. I was afraid of that, Crowfeather thought. One star had made Larkwing a warrior because of her bravery in the great battle, and given the injuries Whiskernose had suffered in that same battle. One star had let them retire, with honor to the Elder's den, and Hairspring was the new deputy. But none of that mattered, as the rest of their clans wouldn't accept them. Why can't one star see that? Does he have bees in his brain? Crowfeather made his way back alone, padding along just behind a cluster of his clanmates. I can't believe it! Gorsell exclaimed. One star tells us all to remember the fallen warriors, but he's fine with the traitors who killed him staying in the clan. Hey, that's not fair! Crowfeather pr pr protested his ginger pelt bristling as the new warrior turned to his former mentor. When, when clan cats didn't kill their clanmates, most of the cats who trained the, with the dark forest turned against them when they found out what was really going on. Most, Leaftail repeated with a lash of his tabby tail. Not all. Moving as one, the cats turned to stare at Breezepelt, who was padding past them with Heather Tail at his side. I know what you mean, murmured Gorsil. It doesn't seem right that Breezepelt is still here. I know one star thinks he isn't a traitor because he didn't try to kill a wind clan cat, but isn't fighting on the side of the dark clan forest just as bad? How can we ever trust him again? I never will, Leaftail asserted confidently. The clan will be almost better off if something happened to Breeze Pelt. Gorse held me out, like a badger took care of him or something. Crowfeather couldn't suppress a gaze of shock. Great star clan! Are they fur brained or feather brained? He wasn't sure that he trusted Breeze Pelt. But he couldn't believe he had heard a cat wishing death upon a warrior from her own clan. The four gossiping cats halted, turning to look at him with expressions of horror on their faces. Clearly, they had no idea that they could hear that they, he could overhear what they were saying. Uh, Crowfeather, Gorsell began. Crowfeather ignored her, not in the mood to give them the rebuke as they uh, were obviously expecting. I don't give a moss friend what those what these flea brains think. They don't deserve the effort it would take to insult them. Instead, he stalked past them with his head down, making for the camp. His pelt grew hot with anger as he felt the gazes of his clanmates piercing him like a wasp like wasp things. It was horrible to hear them talk about a son like that. But the worst of it was, he couldn't disagree with them. Back in camp, Crowfeather looked for his apprentice, Featherpaw, and found her near the fresh kill pile. Sharing a vole with Slightpaw and Hootpaw, he noticed with approval how she kept her gray tabby pelt nearly groomed and her alert look as she spotted him approaching. He jerked his head to summon her. Come on, we're going hunting! Featherpaw hastily swallowed the last mouthful of prey and swiped her tongue around her jaws. Then she stood up. Great! Hoodpaw and Slightpaw are going out, too. Can we all hunt together? Crowfeather was about to refuse when Hairspring, Slightpaw's mentor, strolled up to join them. Hoodpaw's mentor, Nightcloud, was walking just beside them. That's a great idea! Hairspring mewed warmly. The more hunting styles the apprentices get to see, the better. Crowfeather groaned inwardly. The last cats he wanted to spend time with were the new deputy in Nightcloud who was his former mate and the mother of his WinClan son. I should have never mated with her, he thought. It was a mouse-hearted attempt to make family in my own clan. He had been angry and bitter over losing Leafpool. He never loved Nightcloud, and she never forgave him for it. Nightcloud didn't look too pleased about this idea either, but the three apprentices were exchanging delighted glances at the thought of training together. Crowfeather didn't feel he had much choice 
Besides, he didn't want to disappoint Featherpaw. Okay, he mur muttered. One star wanted us to go and hunt down near the Thunder Clan border, Hairspring announced, gathering the patrol together with a sleep of his tail. There have been reports of weird scents in the area, and for some reason, prey is scarce. Crowfeather nodded. Good idea. I tried hunting over there the other day and came back empty pawed. Hairspring took the lead as, as the patrol left the camp and headed down the hill, headed downhill toward the border with Thunderclan. The apprentices scampered along, along together, jostling one another and boasting about how much prey they were going to catch. Chilly wind had faded into a faint breeze, and wide patches of pale blue sky showed between the clouds. Crowfeather sniffed the air and picked up the scent of rabbit. I've got a good feeling about today, Hairspring announced. I think the prey will be running well. He shouted cheerful, though Crowfeather thought he had been he had to be aware of the tension between him and Nightcloud, who was stalking along beside Hootpaw as if she was trying to pretend Crowfeather wasn't there. What's her problem? Well, I'm not going to beg for her attention if that's what she expects. The deputy had hardly finished speaking when a rabbit started up unexpectedly from a tussock of long grass and fled across the moor. Nightcloud raced after it. Crowfeather could not help admiring her strong, graceful bounds and the way her muscles ripped, rippled under her black pelt. But she's not my mate anymore, and that's just fine by me. Life's easier now. Suppressing a snort of annoyance, he turned to Featherpaw. Watch Nightcloud, he instructed her. See how quickly she re reacted? And when that rabbit changes direction, she doesn't lose a step? Why is that? Featherpaw's head tilted as she searched for the answer. After a moment, she looked back at him with wide, questioning eyes. I don't know. Because she's a good hunter. Because because a good hunter is always thinking. Crowfeather told her. Always alert to a prey's best route of escape. You can't just follow it. You have to work out where it's going to run. That's what Nightcloud is doing now. Featherpaw nodded, her gaze fixed on the black she-cat. She's great. As she spoke, the rabbit vanished beside an outcrop of rocks, with Nightcloud hard on his paws. A shrill squeal of terror was abruptly cut off, and a moment later, Nightcloud emerged from the rocks, with the limp body of the rabbit dangling from her jaws. She got it! Hoodpaw exclaimed. Brilliant catch! Hairspring meowed hardly as Nightcloud padded back to the rest of the patrol. Yeah, good job. Crowfeather added with her eyes briefly met his. Nightcloud swiftly looked away from him. Thanks, Hairspring, she mewed. Crowfeather swallowed a rumble of annoyance, not wanting to look angry in front of her of the apprentices. How petty! She can't even accept my praise! When Nightcloud had finished scr scraping earth over her rabbit to collect it later, the patrol continued farther down the hill. Crowfeather was the first to spot the black-tipped ears of a hare, poking up from where the creature was crouching in a shallow dip in the ground. We could tell me what the problem, the problem is here? Hairspring asked the princess in a low voice. Featherpaw waved her tail excitedly, but had the sense to squeak, speak in a moment murmur, in a quiet murmur, as she answered. The breeze is blowing from us to the hare. Right. Hairspring mewed, while Crowfeather felt proud that the apprentice had spoken first. So, it's going to scent us long before we could get up close to Pounce. What do you think we should do about that? This time, it was Hoodpaw who replied. Move around so we're in a better place? Good. Hairspring praised him. And this is one of the times when it could be better to hunt in a team rather than alone. Crowfeather, Crowfeather, I'm going to work my way around until I'm on the far side, side of the hare. When I give the signal... I want you to chase the hare over to me. Crowfeather nodded, thinking that if he had been leading the patrol, he would have been given the task to one of the apprentices. But I must be mouse-brained because Hairspring's a deputy. What do I know? Okay. Hairspring set off at once, creeping along with his belly fur, brushing the ground, taking advantage of every scrape of cover. Crowfeather could barely make out his brown and white pelt among the tussocks of the weary grass. The apprentices watched, their claws flexing in anticipation. But, before Hairspring was in position, a stronger puff of wind passed over to the ground. The hare's head lifted from its cover, its nose twitching. 
All right, warriors. So I think now will be a good time to pause and leave it off at a cliffhanger. Because it's 30 minutes long and we aren't going to be making a one hour video. No, because you guys are expecting to see something that is not wasting your time. So, hey, this is at least what I could do for now. I have not read this book yet. So far, I'm trying to catch up on to um, the broken code, but I'm on a vision of shadows. But with so much that's going on, I really don't think I'm going to be able to continue a vision of shadows because I just don't clearly think I can read it. But still, if you warriors enjoyed this video, claw that like button. And hit subscribe to join the clan today. And I hope to see Warriors on my next video for the reading. Stay sharp.